videos. Uh, my topic is on update on classification and recent terminology. Devising a classification, classification system in medical science is often challenging task due to the complexity and variability of human anatomy and physiology. To classify all kinds of ocular trauma, one had to add three more categories, which was that of non-mechanical injury, adnexal injury, and destructive globe injuries, which was not included in the previous classification. The current classification of ocular trauma does not incorporate all these three, and a proposed new classification is broader based and comprehensive to allow for classification of a wider range of ocular injuries not covered by the current classification as a fifth of mechanical injuries involves the ocular adnexa. Now the BETS classification, which is the Birmingham Eye Trauma Terminology, satisfies all the criteria for standard terminology. It provides a clear definition of all injury types and places each injury type within the framework of the all comprehensive system. Now the old classification, which was in 1996 by Kuhn et al., it classified mechanical injuries into closed and open globe injuries and the closed globe injuries there was no full thickness wound in the eye, whereas in the open globe there was full thickness and there were certain terminologies ascribed which I'll just talk to you about. Now this was the BETS classification where it was the broader classification was the closed and the open globe injuries. The closed globe was the contusion and the lamellar lacerations and the open globe injuries was rupture and laceration. Laceration which was again further divided into the penetrating, perforating and the intraocular foreign bodies. So the terms in BET were closed globe injuries where there was no full thickness injury, open globe which was a full thickness injury. Closed globe was divided into contusion and lamellar. In the contusion, it was generally a blunt injury and in the lamellar, it was a partial thickness generally with a sharp object. And in the open globe varieties, which was full thickness, the rupture was with a blunt object and the lacerations were with a sharp, sharp object. Then the three subclassifications of the lacerations was penetrating injury, where there was no exit wound, only an entry wound, perforating injury, where there was both entrance and exit, and an intraocular foreign body, which is a retained intraocular foreign body, causing entrance wounds. In 2009, a new classification of ocular trauma was proposed. In this, the general classification was that of local associated injuries and cause of injury. Now the local was subdivided into mechanical and non-mechanical. Now non-mechanical comprised of chemical, thermal, radiation and electrical burns, whereas the mechanical injuries was divided into globe uh, injuries, destructive globe injuries and adnexal injuries. And in the adnexa, it involved the palpebral fissures, the conjunctiva, the lacrimal apparatus and the orbit. We'll go into the subclassifications of the globe and destructive a little later. And in the general classification where the associated injuries were there, it was associated injuries of the head, facial injuries and multiple injuries. And the cause was another, this whether it was sports related, whether it was a RTA, whether it was industrial, it was due to an assault, agricultural or daily activities. Now coming to the subclassification of the global uh, injuries, they are structural and pathological. Now structural, as the name suggests, they are either problems in the anterior segment which could involve the cornea, sclera, uvea, lens or the pupil and the posterior segment which involves the retina vitreous, choroid, sclera and uh, the uh, optic nerve. And in the pathological, again, it's subdivided into a closed globe and open globe. Uh, the same three contusion, lamellar and laceration are there, but there is also extraocular foreign body, intramural foreign body and dislocations. And in the open globe, apart from rupture, penetration, perforation and IOFB, these are the uh, classifications. Now the destructive globe injuries where there is a traumatic evisceration by itself or there is a traumatic enucleation by itself 
or there is a full thickness laceration which involves one third of the globe circumference. So you see this general classification of ocular trauma, it involves all the structures and the causative agents uh, and uh, the methodologies uh, of ocular trauma. So you have a very comprehensive system which you can grade it on. So all cases, as I said, the, uh, these are uh, a repetition of what I've just told you. And uh, the uh, this is again a repetition. Now, uh, when you decide on which part the eye is affected, the zone one is an injury to up to the limbus. From the limbus to five millimeters behind is zone two, and the rest of it is rest of the sclera is zone three. And full thickness injuries are seen in this region. So the types you can classify as. The visual acuity is of course very important whether uh, it has got some perception to no light perception or to good perception also. And pupils whether there is an RAPD present or there is no RAPD present and the zone involved as I mentioned just now. So then uh, there was a study by Shukla et al where they found that out of all the 535 cases of ocular injury with the old classification they were able to classify 364 of the 535 cases, so that means 33% of the cases were missing out in the old classification, but with the current new classification, everything can get classified. So the management is accurate history, examination, entry point, exit point, gonioscopy, fundoscopy, documentation for damage structures, a CT scan and MRI contraindicated if, it is a, if there is a metallic foreign body. Now, where the blunt traumas are concerned, it can affect any part of the eye, whether it is the lens or the vitreous or the retina or the choroid, and similar for the penetrating and the perforating injuries. Now, there is something called as an OTS score, which there are no classifications as of now of classifications, investigations, or treatment guidelines. They are internationally standardized and practiced. There are numerous controversies and variability of practice standards to review the relevance and practice of ocular trauma to highlight validated and effective predictive models and why an OTS is required to predict visual outcome and also to help audit out outcomes. There is another thing called as the abbreviated injury scale, which is also a six point ordinal scale from minor to maximal. The injury severity score is based on AIS and it's based on the body region or regions affected with the face and eyes as important components. So now the OTS score, if you see over here roughly, uh, the raw points are, if it is no PL at 60, if it's PL or hand movements at 70, and the vision, uh, if it is 20 by 40, it's 100. So this is in order of betterment. And if there is a globe rupture, it is minus 23. Endophthalmitis is minus 17. Perforating injury is minus 14. Retinal detachment is minus 11. Refractive, uh, 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 relative afferent pupillary diffractive is minus 10. So a raw score sum is equal to the sum of raw points, which gives you the status of what the visual outcome would be in these people after the repair is done. So you can prognosticate these kind of things. This is the same thing shown in more clearer handwriting. So despite the reported benefits of OTS in children, many a times the OTS goes wrong in children because of the potential development of amblyopia, which is not catered to by the OTS system. Strabismus, refractive errors, or ocular opacities can result in amblyopia in children. If the possibility of amblyopia is not included in this score, then the predictive accuracy of the OTS is compromised. So the authors have incorporated another mathematical model called as a POTS, that is the Pediatric Ophthalmic Traumatic Score, which helps to safely uh, compare the predictive value of uh, children with their injuries and whatever is going to happen thereon from the possibilities of strabismus, amblyopia, etc., to give a reasonable assessment uh, of children with traumatic cataract. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I invite Dr. Natarajan to come and give his talk now. All yours.
Thank you, Kerubi, for a wonderful talk on class.